welcome to the Church of the Holy Spirit in Mosley and welcome back to our Bible study group and we're looking forward to another good year ahead as we delve deep into God's Word together. I do encourage you to join each week, each Tuesday evening, 7 o'clock, the video will be released online and we gather in person in the current hall room in our parish centre at 7.30. The online version of the Bible study is an abbreviated version of what we engage with in person. This year we are looking at the book of Nehemiah. I'm really excited about this. Themes of prayer, of planning, of building. We're going to be looking at all of that together. And this journey together this year promises to offer us much to think about, much to wrestle with, much to engage with. I think as we take this journey together, we're going to see that the book of Nehemiah has an obvious relevance to any type of rebuilding that we might engage in uh, with the intention of growing God's kingdom and bringing him all the glory. There are numerous themes in the book of Nehemiah. We will reflect on them together uh, throughout the year. Some of them include mission, redemption, the providence of God. Nehemiah is a fairly short biblical book. There's only 13 chapters but in my opinion they record one of the most profound examples of leadership and perseverance that we can find in the pages of scripture. So I think that we've a lot to look forward to this year. A study series that's timely, a study series that's packed full of challenge and application and our journey begins this week with this short little introduction outlining and pointing out some of the things that we're going to go a little deeper into and unpack further in the year ahead. One biblical scholar who's going to appear time and again in our studies this year is a man called Jeff Treasure. I loved this opening quote of his. Can one man with the help of God turn a vision into reality? Nehemiah did. The walls of Jerusalem arose from rubble. A wayward people were brought together as a worshipping community. But the book of Nehemiah is not simply history. It challenges and encourages us all, whether leaders or church members, to face the issues and problems confronting our churches today. It offers us timeless principles and insights to be followed if we are to see many of our churches rise from potential ruins to God-inspired restoration. Now, I don't know about you, but when I read those words, when I hear and reflect in those words, they excite me. And I do believe that we've a lot to get excited about in our Bible study series this year. So let's begin our little introduction more earnestly, looking at a few more details. It's believed that there was a period of 13 years between the end of Ezra and the beginning of Nehemiah. Sometimes it's very helpful to read these two books back to back. Many of the commentators and biblical scholars would have a combined commentary, Ezra and Nehemiah. And if you were to read them back to back, you will see elements of overlap. Nehemiah 8, Nehemiah 12, there are areas where there is a clear connection. Derek Kidner was a biblical scholar and he observes this. Ezra was a quieter personality than the formidable, practical Nehemiah. He does not leap out of the page as this man, Nehemiah, does. Nehemiah is often referred to as a man of action. He set out to uh, undertake a task, to rebuild a wall, and in doing so he left a lasting legacy. Remembered as a great leader, organiser, and a pragmatist. These traits combined uh, uh, well to make a very powerful combination and perhaps they offer some explanation as to how he rose to become the cupbearer of Artaxerxes, the Persian king. You read that in Nehemiah 1.11. That role of cupbearer doesn't sound that terribly grand, does it? But it was actually a very important position, one that held great influence. In many ways, the role of cupbearer has been compared uh, to that of a modern day prime minister and master of ceremonies molded into one role. 
from that position of prominence, from that position of influence, Nehemiah was called by God for a very specific task. Another scholar we're going to be using in our time together this year is Stan Evers. And he reflects this. The sovereign God ordained that Nehemiah was the right man in the right place for his use. The whole of his life up to this point was a preparation for the role he was shortly to play in God's purpose for the Jews. Even very early here in this uh, opening session, our thoughts are being stimulated to think. We're thinking about journeys of faith now. The call of God. The many ways that we can step out to serve God. And given that trajectory of thought, we're going to, for the first time in this uh, new Bible study series, push the pause button. Our question is this. Have you ever experienced the leading of God toward a specific task? How did he prepare you for that task? As we look at the 13 chapters of Nehemiah, they split very neatly into two clear sections. Another biblical commentator, Eric Mason, highlights the focus on chapters 1 to 7 is more on external physical issues and social renewal. Chapters 8 to 13 focus more on inward spiritual issues and covenant renewal. And those opening seven chapters of Nehemiah, our attention is drawn and will be drawn to the repair, the restoration, the rebuild of the walls of Jerusalem. It's a major task, a project that Nehemiah was called uh, to undertake and God used him greatly to bring hope and security to a broken city. Let's just pause to think about that. It's worth noting, isn't it, that Nehemiah was the, the cupbearer, the equivalent of a, a prime minister and master of ceremonies moulded into one. But he wasn't a natural builder. He was called by God to undertake a task that appeared improbable, if not impossible. And as we look at the story of Nehemiah, it's encouraging to remember that God equips those he calls to achieve great things for his glory. God can use you and I for his glory. And if he calls us, he will give us the means to fulfill that call. In the second half of the book of Nehemiah, chapters 8 to 13, our attention is going to be drawn to the revitalization of the people of God. I think we're going to see as we study those chapters together how Nehemiah dealt with a range of issues, justice, how he resisted the distractions of enemies, how he reinstated the word of God in its place at the centre of the life of the city. Are you discerning already, even at this early stage, how clear it is that Nehemiah's call was challenging and extensive? And in the weeks and months ahead, as we unpack this more fully, the specifics during the series of studies that we're going to take will remind us about the importance of two big things, resilience and perseverance. In 2003, an American pastor by the name of Irwin McManus spoke to delegates at a leadership conference. The hall was packed. They were listening to him expound teachings about Christian leadership. And there was a line that he included, and to paraphrase him, it was this, God never calls a leader to an easy task. God never calls a leader to do an easy task. And I think as we look at Nehemiah, this is certainly proven to be the case. In previous Bible study series, the name Warren Veersby has been used, a prolific biblical scholar, pastor and teacher. And we're going to use him again this year. And he offers a very helpful analysis. Nehemiah is going to show you how to keep going when you feel like giving up. In fact, determination is the big idea that runs through this book. Friends, the reality when the rubber hits the road in our studies of Nehemiah 
is that we are reminded that mission on the front line can and most likely will be difficult. We will be discouraged at times as we undertake that journey. We long to see signs of progress, don't we, in mission and ministry. And it's easy to become deflated. It's easy to be downbeat when the rate of progress appears to be slow. At times like these, and we all know what it is to be discouraged, at times like these, we are encouraged to keep on keeping on, to persevere and to remain faithful. Friends, we're going to hit the pause button now as we reflect on this a little more fully. Question. Can you think of an occasion when you seem to be facing an impossible task? What helped you through your challenge? The example of Nehemiah also emphasises the importance of having a clear, focused and structured plan. In coming weeks as we look at the rebuilding uh, of the walls and the revitalisation of the people of God, we're going to see that Nehemiah was well organised. But being well organised wasn't enough. Nehemiah took those plans and he built them and laid them on a solid foundation. That solid foundation was prayer. When he heard the news that the walls of Jerusalem were broken down, Nehemiah prayed. When he had, was having conversations about his, uh, with his king about going to undertake the task, he prayed that he would receive God's favour. After he was taunted by uh, Tobiah and Sanballat, Nehemiah did something. He committed the situation to prayer. That's only three instances of many that we are going to encounter this year where Nehemiah prayed. He turned to God. We are consistently reminded in this incredible Old Testament book about the power of prayer. Wearsby lands us again helpfully here. If you want to develop determination, the kind of resolve that does not give up in the face of opposition, then follow the example of Nehemiah and take every situation to the Lord in prayer, asking him how things should be done. The importance of prayer. Finally then this week, the book of Nehemiah also reminds us of the importance of teamwork. Ministry partnerships are consistently modelled in the Bible. And in Nehemiah we see how he sought help from other people. Nehemiah realised that he couldn't and shouldn't undertake the task simply by himself. Let's take an example. He set out to survey the damaged walls with some other men. You read that in chapter 2 verse 12. He needed the help of others to actually rebuild the walls, didn't he? Friends, it's good to partner with others as we seek to serve God. There is power in together. So there we are, there's a few little pointers for the year ahead. I would love for you to join with us each week as we delve deeper into this incredible, challenging, uplifting and inspirational book of the Bible. We're encouraged as we do that to listen to God. We're challenged to trust God entirely and we're reminded that it is possible to live as determined people. Why? Because God goes before us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, the Bible. And Lord, we're really excited about this year's Bible study series on Nehemiah. Lord, uh, anoint our thinking, our reflections, our discussions, our deliberations. And Lord, may we learn more about you and may you allow us to draw ever closer to you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.